This is Kuroit, a tiny little village with a big heart in southwest Victoria. It's also home to some of the best food and drink in Australia. I'm Wendy Hargraves, and this is my happy place, talking to people who make and grow our food. Kuroit is a three-hour drive west of Melbourne, just past Warrnambool on the northern slope of Tower Hill, an extinct volcano that last erupted more than 30,000 years ago, leaving a crater that's more than three kilometres wide. The Southern Ocean is just south of Tower Hill, and this combination of lava flows and coastal winds have created a truly unique and inspiring place for growing food and drink. The dirt around here looks like chocolate cake and almost bounces when you walk on it. Food seems to grow before your eyes. Despite this wild weather, volcanoes Ben Polner and his daughter Abby are busy harvesting their spring crop. This is volcano produce. We've got the Southern Ocean just there. Warnable's just over there. And there's a big extinct volcano called Tower Hill just up the road. It has the most amazing volcanic soil. They call it magic dirt around here because everything grows and grows really well. However, they've had their driest season on record here and uh, they're hoping that this storm that's blowing in right now will bring some rain. <laughs> this broccoli looks amazing. Yep, it's a nice wow. little broccoli. To have a look at. Look at that. It weighs so much more. Yeah, they're real dense. That's How, right. Like, what percentage heavier would these be than your average broccoli? Oh, like we, feel uh, so one, of our, one of our big problems, especially during, um, you know, peak growing times, is having product that's too big. Oh, so, yeah. So it's too so big for the market. It's too big to send down to Melbourne to the market. That's wow. right. Wow. Um, look, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. And it just means it's, it's product that is right at its peak. It's, um, just absolutely perfect yeah but in these conditions yeah you will we'll often find our produce does does get quite large oh, i guess if and, you're paying um, by the kilo that's 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 too right it's going to be an expensive yeah, yeah, yeah. bit of broccoli yeah. wow it's beautiful but, hey we, we never get any complaints about it from our I from our customers yeah <laughs> oh it's making me hungry a lot of people come back for time and time again they love it at volcano everything is done by hand planting, picking, packing, and each day's harvest is sold at a farm shop, which is open seven days a week. It's also home delivered right across the southwest from Portland to Colac. These really are amazing spray-free veggies. But it's the generosity of this family business that sets Volcano apart. Every week, school groups come here to get their hands dirty and harvest veggies, and everything they pick goes straight to locals doing it tough. Yeah, you know, and look, it's just wonderful seeing all of the school kids having a sense of purpose, right? They're coming here, they're on a mission. <laughs> we're, we're picking stuff for food share. You know, it's like a race, you know, oh, to wow. see how much they can pick, you know, how much they can get in the, in the, uh, in the food share truck for, for that particular day. So some days there might be a quarter of a tonne of product in there, some days there might be half a tonne of product that actually goes through to food share. It's this strong community spirit that makes Kuroit really special. Local food growers and producers work together to create a strong supply chain so that new small-scale farms can have a red-hot go. Like Campus Glen. Leslie Harris and Hugo Howes are Highland cattle farmers and their hairy charges are adorable, especially the calves. Many are sold to small hobby farms in need of a super cute lawnmower, while some enjoy a cruisy life of a stud animal. But these gorgeous Scottish bovines are most famous for their beef, naturally marbled because they live much longer lives on these beautiful pastures. find there are people that care about the story. They care about um, protecting heritage breeds. They care about the quality and the flavor. They care about the ethics of the, the animals and how the animals are handled right till the last day. Um, 
and, and, and for that's the people we serve. Hugo and Leslie have only been farmers for a few years, but they've found their happy place in the rolling hills northwest of Kuroit. They love caring for their highland herd and supplement their income by hosting tourists in a beautiful little farm cottage on the property and selling beef online through the Open Food Network. They might be a small scale farm, but their beef is winning fans right across the region. But more on that later. We're in the main street of Kuroit, and across the road here is a wonderful little brewery and distillery called Noodle Doof, or Noodle Doof. Sam Noodles Rudolph and Alex Doof Carr have turned an old motor garage into a much loved community hub, like a town hall with small batch drinks and great food. These boys love their local growers, and the growers love them right back. you'll find local produce in everything they make. What, what's the beer that's being canned today? So it's a chocolate strawberry uh, Belgian double. Um, the strawberries um, that we've got are from Volcano Produce, um, just down the edge of Tower Hill. Um, so they get a heap of, you know, um, damaged strawberries they can't sell to the public. So that was from last summer? And yeah, so last summer, yeah. And yeah. then what did you, how did you capture that summer strawberry? Yeah, so we make a um, strawberry liqueur all the time. So we just thought we'd make a, a strawberry extract um, out of the strawberries and then infuse it into the beer and it's tasting really, really young. And we're always trying to think of ways we can pull local ingredients in, um, engage the local community. Like we do a rhubarb beer. Um, we offer a cup of coffee, uh, maybe a pot if they're into that, um, to bring in a big bunch of rhubarb. And then we brew that beer once a year. So we get over a hundred kilos just from the local community of like out, out of their veggie garden. And garden's rhubarb and grows like, like weeds around here, know. right? We can't visit Noodle Doof without a cheeky taste of their drinks and their famous Reuben sandwich. So Hugo, who came to us with, with the Highland beef, um, yeah, just said, you've got to try it. You've got to try it. You've got to try it. And we did, and we're like, yep, it's on. So, mm. really special. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I think it's elevated the Reuben. So we had another mm. beef in there, but, um, Mm. Just the texture of that beef is, um, is so great. Mm. Yeah. It turns out the crunchy kraut on the Reuben is almost as famous as the corned beef. It's made by Noodle Doof's ex-chef, Adam Porter, who now runs a thriving backyard fermenting business called Pickle Project. And guess where most of his veggies come from? just down the road at Volcano Produce. Adam turns everything they grow into a huge range of ferments, pickles and more. So we just won a bronze at the Melbourne show for the fennel. We actually sent 10 items away and came back with seven medals, which we were very, very happy with. It was a, just a sort of a spur of the moment thing where we thought we wanted to see where our products sort of stacked up against Thank you. a lot of the other picklers uh, and fermenters in... Oi. Do you want a plate? No, no, I'll be right. Uh, yeah, a lot of the fermenters and picklers around Victoria and, yeah, we were <laughs> very happy to get, get the recognition that we got. This is one of my favourites as well. Super oh. crunchy. You get the nice balance of the brine. Sweet Fair. and sour. Mm -hmm. And then all that aniseed flavour comes out as all the liquid It doesn't come released. out until the end, you're mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Normally you get hit with that big black jelly bean, right? Yep. And but it comes out right at the end. And that allows the flavour just to keep tickling your mouth as long as it sits in there. Now this is magic, mate. This is amazing. Very, very, very happy. It feels like there's a lot of love in this community for, for people who are having a crack. Yeah, definitely. And it's 
becoming more and more so. There's so many good producers and growers of all sorts of stuff down here. Um, we'll be on the map fairly soon, I hope. Everyone, everyone wants it to be. It's only going to benefit everyone. And there's room for everyone to be milking that cow. It's I hate to tell you, mate, I think you're already on the map. Oh, well, that's good. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you'll bring a fair bit more spotlight down here. <laughs> well, even at the, the local fresh market down here on a Sunday, there was four stall holders that won medals at the Melbourne Show this year. So it, it just shows. I think it's it all comes down to that dirt. It felt, yep. honestly, it, when we were walking through the farm in mm. the pounding rain and <laughs> driving wind. Um, I couldn't help but smile though because it felt like we were walking on squishy chocolate cake. Yep. You, you know, like, just look how dark it is. It's amazing. And you know it's going to be good. So this is where it all started. This is the crater of the uh, Tower Hill volcano and it's like time stops here. It's so beautiful. And this is why the Kuroit region has such beautiful volcanic soil. And now it's a wildlife reserve. Just south of Tower Hill, there's another small business turning Kuroit's fresh produce into all sorts of old fashioned goodness. Robin and Stephen Mitchell run Mitch's Preserves, making more than 40 different jams, pickles, relishes and sauces using old family recipes. And they do it all from this tiny little kitchen in a long closed pub. Today, Robin's making her famous cauliflower pickles, jarred on the spot for sale at farmers markets and local shops and online. Yeah. So have you got any favourite producers around you? Um, yeah, I love volcano produce. Um, we've got another, um, they have the most beautiful strawberries too that we use. Every single jar that you make mm -hmm. is done by hand like this? Absolutely. Yeah. Every single one. How do you small think batch. it makes a difference making a small batch like this compared to the stuff oh. that we usually find on our, on our shelves in shops? I just think the quality is better, the colour and everything. And the flavour. And the flavour, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. What's next then? Are you working on any secret secret products coming up soon? I really don't want to make any more. We've got over 40 <laughs> products and I'm We've quite happy. And I'm quite happy to, um, you know, perfect what we've got. What's it like living in this area where everyone seems to know what everyone's up to and, and, uh, and helps everybody out? It, se it seems like it's a really beautiful it connection really around here. It's a tight-knit community, yes. Um, yeah, no, I've lived here my whole life. I love it. Yep, we get four seasons in a day if we're lucky. Well, we just I am absolutely evidence of that because um, I feel entirely wind-pummeled. <laughs> yeah, well, that's from the change that came through this morning. It was a ripper. Indicative of the area for sure. <laughs> this wild weather has been one of the keys to success at Basalt Wines, a delightful little vineyard just a kilometre up the road from Mitch's. Shane Clancy switched from running restaurants to growing grapes and hasn't looked back. Look, there is magic in, in these hills. Magic in this dirt. Absolutely magic well, in this call dirt. call it magic dirt, right? Magic dirt. Isn't that a band? Yeah. <laughs> but no. Nah, everything look, grows. If you stood here long enough, you'd probably grow yourself, Wendy. <laughs> you don't want to clone me, mate. No. <laughs> but no. Nah, so, what a beautiful place, though. It's so, just yeah, so 21 years ago when I bought this block, it was, it had just harvested spuds. And then, yeah, we put the vineyard in and planted a few trees and... Looks like it's been here forever, but... Um, it really does. Yeah, no, it works well. You can jump on your push bike. Kalani Beach is stunning. Five minutes ride there. Tower Hill, the first national park in Victoria. Uh, it's five, ten minutes on the bike that way. Probably the least known national park in oh, Victoria absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And then, yeah, once you come out of Tower Hill on your push bike, you ride up the hill to Croyt and... Uh, oh, that'd be a nasty have, ride. Have a whiskey or two and then... You will uh, have earned it. ...ride home again with a tailwind. Yeah, it's a cool Fantastic. little spot. Great part, great part of the world, isn't it, Paddy? And everything's 20 minutes away. Yeah, 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 10 minutes if you, if you run. <laughs> but uh, it's all pretty close by. Yeah, no, you, you're a very lucky man to have all of this nearby, so... 
You make right. your own luck, of course, but, oh, yeah. no, but no, this no. is pretty cool. No, nah, look, we, um, we're wrapped down here. Like I've got hospitality background and we can do, you know, exciting stuff like all the guys and girls in the city because we've got access to beautiful produce, um, but we can have a bit more fun. You know, we just open daytime in the cellar door here um, and have a lifestyle. In Shane's winery restaurant, his neighbour's food and drink is celebrated just as much as his latest vintage, which, by the way, is exceptional. The, our heritage came from the Irish fleets that came in in the 1830s, 1840s, but spuds, Croyd's always been built on spuds. So the dish you had a minute ago, which was... Oh. a Potato bread. Yeah, focaccia. You know, we call it's, it focaccia, but it's potato bread based it's with incredible. the beautiful potatoes just from our friends up here at the volcano um, with some local, um, or some rosemary out of the garden. Beautiful, beautiful. And some local butter and olives on the focaccia. But yeah, spuds is what it's all about. And even the boys now up at Karoi, at Noodle Doof, doing uh, not only the whiskey, oh, but I'm loving the vodka that they've just made with Don't get me started waste on that. product. If you, a few old spuds and uh, yeah. distilling that down, making unreal, unreal. It is an amazing yeah. place. Does it make it easier for you in your beautiful winery restaurant to actually produce a menu when you've got stuff in season around you? Do you Well, do you it build does it? because you know, a typical example, on a Saturday morning, the phone might have just rung, the, the bookings have come in, I'm going, I haven't got enough produce, what am I going to do? I just jump in the car and I've done this plenty of Saturday mornings, roar on down to see the boys at, uh, and the girls at uh, Volcano and you know, often they'll have the beautiful heirloom carrots, oh like God. the little baby Dutch carrots. So Actually, I'll go, I'm going oh, yep. to eat one of those while you're yeah, talking. Get into that. It's got a little uh, pine nut vinaigrette and an almond cream. But uh, mm. you know, they've always got something there at the drop of a hat, you know, when the strawberries are in season, they're just bang on. But yeah, I'll use lots of theirs. Um, you know, if I run out of beer, boys, if you're going beer uh, and cheese is local cheese, you know, yeah, there's plenty of things. But the thing is, we're all passionate growers and we tend to, you know, radiate towards each other. So we, we sort of know, you know, what each other's growing from time to time or what they're producing beer wise or wine wise or, you know, if the local guys are growing corn up the road, everyone sort of radiates toward them because we're at, at the... At the heart of it all, we're all producers and we want to show off what we produce mm. to our local and international tourists when they come in. So yeah, we're always in each other's ears going, right, how are we going to make ourselves look good this week by pulling out some nice produce that, you know, the locals come by and go, wow, I can't believe you've been here for 20 years and I've never set foot in the door. Is this local? <laughs> Is this honeycomb out of your vineyard just there? Go, come on down. It's just over there. Just down there. From the Southern Ocean to the rolling volcanic hills, you can't help but feel happy in this neck of the woods. Kuroit is a place where everyone just seems to get along and get stuff done. It must be all that wonderful food and drink. Next on your neck of the woods, we head deep into dairy country and meet the makers and growers of Tim Boone, home of what might be the nation's best ice cream. Stay tuned. <laughs>